Hello, welcome. Uh, it is 6.30 and I, Sarah Graham, am calling the meeting to order. Um, the Stratford Planning Commission is open, did you say a date? It's 6.30 on Tuesday, March 7th, and I'm calling the meeting to order. The Stratford Planning Commission is now open for a public hearing for these those petitions advertised to be heard at this session. Um, the regular members present at this meeting are um, and as I call your name, if you could um, identify yourself, Ed Kingston. Here. Sorry. Joe Garrix. You're right. Still getting used to this. <laughs> I'll, I'll get this one day. Uh, our Joe Garrix. Here. Uh, Max Doolin, right? Yeah. Hi. I have it right here. Doolin. And Steve Rowe. Here. And our alternates sitting in tonight are Ed Kingston. I'm here again. <laughs> And we are joined by um, town planner Sismitha Tata. Here. Okay. Um, we do not have Alex Vicola present. Ed Kingston will be seated for this meeting as a regular member. Okay. We do not have Alec Vicola present, and Ed Kingston will be seated for this meeting in, in his presence. Um, before calling for the first com first petition, I would like to inform those of you who have never appeared before us that it is the policy of this commission to have questions of the petitioner directed through the chairman. The chair reserves the right to rule on cross-examination for the purpose of clarification of technical questions. I wish to announce that should any items on tonight's agenda take more time than anticipated, this public hearing may conclude at 11 p.m. and be continued to another date, which will be established at that time. Any items not heard by 11 p.m. tonight will be heard at the continued public hearing. For the record, petitions to be heard this evening were advertised in the town planning and zoning webpage and in the clerk's office in accordance with state statutes. On, they were advertised on February 22nd and March 5th. I will now advise the town planner to read the first petition, please. Thank you, Chairman. This is the petition of Romano Brothers Builders for 2863 Broadbridge Avenue and Shrek Road Subdivision. 
the petitioner is requesting a modification of condition of approval, um, which is the uh, condition number two in the original decision letter. Uh, for the waiver of sidewalks in, um, installation on Broadbridge Avenue and Struckers Road. Thank you. Is the petitioner or representative present? Hi. Please, <clears throat> please announce your name and address. Um, and I did this earlier, but for the record, the petition was advertised in the Connecticut Post on February 22nd and March 5th. Um, the petitioner posted a sign on the property and is now requested to submit their certificates of mailing to a Butters in case they haven't provided those already. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair and members of the commission. My name is Joe Kuvik. I'm a lawyer with Harlow Adams and Friedman in Milford, Connecticut, and I reside at 1350 James Farm Road in Stratford. First uh, order of business are the original certificates of mailing. May I submit them? Where do I? How do you do it here? Yeah, if you pass you, you can pass it on. I represent Romano Brothers Builders, LLC, and with me tonight is Mark Romano, principal of the firm. Um, Mr. Romano, well, Romano Brothers Builders bought four of five lots in this subdivision. The, the fifth lot was an existing house that was sold by the original developer. Uh, that original Will you please hold on one second, we're gonna shut, I can't hear you. Yeah, shut the doors. There we go. Thank you, there was another meeting being let out. Appreciate it. We go ahead. Okay. So um, I represent Romano Brothers Builders, and Mr. Mr. Romano is with me tonight to an help answer questions if there are any. Um, Romano uh, brought, bought four of the five lots in the subdivision from the original developer, Gold Coast Homes. The fifth lot has an existing had an existing house on it that was subsequently sold uh, by the original developer. The four lots were undeveloped vacant land um, that Mr. Romano purchased. Mr. Romano is now seeking a waiver of the condition of installation of sidewalks in front of the, the subject subdivision lots. Um, we have reviewed the staff, uh, Ms. Atada's report, and um, we agree with the comments of Ms. Atada, Ms. Kerrigan, and, and Mr. Casey as to this, this, this matter. The reasons for the request um, are, I've got five. First, the, the, the topography of the area, and your regulation states that uh, sidewalks can be uh, waived if you find that a topo topography is an issue. Um, uh, two, sidewalks would only be, um, well, there's gonna be sidewalks to nowhere in this location. Uh, we don't own the whole stretch of land and, and onto Streckfus. Um, <coughs> three, the, um, the actual sidewalk area, no actual sidewalk for the area exists. The work that, uh, there's no actual sidewalk plan in existence for this area. So, and that's one of the issues, I think, with the sidewalks in this area. Um, you're, there's not a lot of sidewalks on, there's no sidewalks on Broadbridge on the side of the road that this property is on. And the concern would be if we did do work uh, down the road, may, maybe the engineering department comes up with a sidewalk plan that conflicts with what's already been there. This work would just have to be ripped out. And th that doesn't seem to be a good use of time, money, or, or, or the town's resources. Again, the sidewalks to nowhere problem, which exists, you'll see it in town all over the place. This would certainly exist in this location if the sidewalks are built. And um, there's a beautiful mature tree um, and other mature trees that would ha likely have to be removed. And we'll start with, this is a photograph of that beautiful mature tree that you've probably all seen. I've also got two photographs showing Streckfus and the, um, the gray house in the first picture is the new house that Mr. Romano built, but you'll see there's no sidewalks there. There'd be side, there's, there's only one lot, and it'd be sidewalks to nowhere. There's two photographs of that. And then photographs on Broadbridge on the side of the road, looking north and looking south on Broadbridge, uh, showing that there are no sidewalks in existence. So again, it would lend to the side. And there's a, you also see in the photographs existing trees that would likely have to be removed. Uh, proceed with the sidewalk. Thank you. <clears throat> pursuant to the regulations, it, pursuant to the regulations, Mr. Romano understands that he would have to, if you will, donate the $9,600 that's held in the, in the sidewalk bond to the town's 
sidewalk, uh, sidewalk installation and repair fund. And when the town gets a chance to develop a sidewalk plan for this area, that money presumably will be there to be used for the purposes it's been designated for. Um, along with this mature tree and other trees, there's, you look up and down Broadbridge, there's lots of foliage uh, plantings that would likely be disrupted too with any sidewalk plan. So that's gonna take some development to work that out. <clears throat> um, and as you probably all know, to waive this condition, it needs to be a three quarters vote of the commission. So that means four affirmative votes to approve the waiver if you decide to grant it. Um, and I don't think it's that complicated. Um, um, and I think I've covered the basics. Are there any questions of this? Thank you. Um, how soon do you anticipate that the payment uh, for the sidewalk would be made? Uh, I, I, I presume it could be uh, released after the appeal period on this runs. Okay. So I think you've got you maybe got to wait the 15 day appeal. Just to period. understand the timeline. It doesn't matter. Thank you. Yeah. Well, otherwise, it's it's not okay. doing anybody any good sitting where it is. Okay. Anything else? Thank, Thank you. you. I'm now going to direct the town planner to summarize her staff report to know if the proposal is consistent or inconsistent with the POCD. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. I'm going to answer the question that Commissioner Doolin had. Um, just looking at my bond calculation sheet. First of all, I was looking at the bond calculation sheet to get back to your question. A bond was already posted for this when uh, a mylar was filed in the town clerk's office. And as part of the bond, I think uh, the $9,600 was already posted for sidewalks. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but um, Mr. Romano would know that. Um, it was posted as cash. Okay, okay. So now it's, I don't think that was withdrawn. It was, there was a partial bond release um, earlier last year for a few other items. So whatever amount is remaining, if we have the 9,600 for sidewalks, we will redirect to another financial account or we will ask uh, him to withdraw that and then repost the bond. Uh, so I have to check with the finance director on what the best approach is for the town. So regarding the staff report, um, I sent this staff report to you uh, a while ago um, because we thought we would have a meeting uh, almost in January, but it never happened. Yes, so um, when the condition was placed on this um, approval for installation of sidewalks, the town engineer provided his comments on November 15, 2022 in response to a letter sent by Ms. Uh, Katerina Conliff um, asking for the sidewalks to be installed. And he said, typically sidewalks are required for subdivisions. There is a partial sidewalk on the south side of the street on Streckbus. So installing there would continue the sidewalk path toward Broadbridge Avenue. There are no sidewalks on this side of the street on Broadbridge Avenue, but there's a crosswalk at success to get onto the other side of the street where sidewalks are more prevalent. So it would be, make more sense to begin to install sidewalks on Broadbridge towards success. That was the intent, but uh, practicality was different. Um, the initial um, developer who applied for the subdivision owned the fifth lot that is um, at the corner of Broadbridge and Streckfuss. So now when Mr. Romano bought this, he only now owns the four new lots and not the, exist the lot with the existing home. And um, there's a mature tree. If you look at the pictures, there's a utility pole and a mature tree in front of the driveway um, where his lots can be entered. So um, when he reached um, Kelly Kerrigan, the conservation superintendent said um, uh, street trees cannot be removed without a public hearing, and it's a mature tree. So it has to be either replaced or removed, and in both cases, um, you know, you would, he would need a, a public hearing. Not only that, if you look at the topography in front, it's almost sloping down towards um, Broadbridge Avenue. Uh, there's a grass strip that's sloping down. So it's hard to build a sidewalk there without leveling that piece. Also, um, another factor was 
Um, if he were to build a sidewalk, how would he continue to Broadbridge and Stratford's side without um, taking an easement on private property because he does not own that piece of property? And what is the bigger vision for the town? Like if you see across the street how the sidewalks are right now, there is a um, curb, then a grass strip, then a narrow sidewalk, or uh, actually I would say a walking path, and then another grass strip, and then there is um, a strip of homes. Right now, the town's code requires uh, at least five foot wide sidewalks, and um, which means that there should be enough room there, um, either abutting the curb by removing the utility pole and the tree, or behind the tree, but then, you know, it would mean that Mr. Romano has to go into private property rights and seek easements for those. And also the town is unsure how this will connect to the rest of the area. How do we want to design this sidewalk for the rest of the area so it looks uniform? So not having a plan in place and the fact that it's delaying a development, um, you know, burdening uh, a development uh, unreasonably for factors that are beyond that uh, applicant's control. We talked to the town attorney on the best advice that we can get and we reached out to Pat Sullivan and she advised um, that maybe the best approach is to take payment in lieu, and when the town is ready to build that piece, use those funds to build that piece along with the rest of the um, sidewalk connections that would be required in that area. Madam Chair. Yes. Who would be responsible for the cost of leveling the area if the, if the uh, sidewalk is deferred to a later time? Does the payment that was anticipated in lieu of the sidewalk installation account for the leveling or would the town be responsible for that at a later time? Can I answer that question? So the calculations were um, arrived at by the town engineer's office based on what is required to build a sidewalk. And I'm assuming that the 9,600 factors in the leveling cost. Um, again, you know, um, it's not like it will be built right away like in the next year. It, it, the town has a priority list. There are some places in the town that are in acute disrepair which need immediate sidewalks. Like when I walk on Honey Spot Road, I feel like, you know, that place needs a facelift right away. So if um, the town chooses um, to actually invest this money uh, in another sidewalk uh, location for the time being, and then come back to this as a priority when needed through the general fund, that is an option too. So the town engineer determined the price of the sidewalk installation the and, he took, and he presumably took into account the topography Question. Milling and paving and everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions from the councilors, uh, commissioners? Madam Chair, I move that uh, we waive the sidewalks in lieu of a pavement. Please, we have one more one more portion. I just was wondering if there are any oh, questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will next be asking the members of the public to come on in favor or opposition of the petition. I will also allow general comments and observations from those who are neither in favor or opposition of the petition. Each member of the public will be provided three minutes to make their arguments. If someone wishes to speak again, you'll give them a chance after everyone who has signed up for their chance to speak first. Okay. So um, please state your name and address for the record and speak into the mic. Katarina Cumler, 54 Streckvis Road. Um, first, thank you everyone Could for coming. Could you use the microphone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm kind of wondering why it took like almost two years for the come up. The, it was approved in November. Oh, yeah. the, um, the plan got approved in November 15th of 2022, so it's 2024. Why did it take that long to kind of approach the sidewalk issue? Um, 
so that was my first question. And then um, if the developer is allowed to pay the town a fee for the sidewalk rather than building it, I just want to make sure that the amount is enough to cover the entire cost, including the site plan, labor, material, along with cutting down any trees if needed, and leveling out the sidewalk. So perhaps a bigger amount is put into a, like a holding until um, you have the final cost. Um, that way, we're not told later on that there's not enough money, we can't do it. There are many elderly people in the neighborhood who cannot cross the four lanes of Broadbridge Ave to get to the other side. They need to use the crosswalk, but there is no way to get to it without walking on the muddy lawns that often have broken glass, or the, when they plow, the lawn is covered in snow and you have to walk in a street to get to the crosswalk. The property that you have to walk across does have a slope, so anyone with a wheelchair or pushing a stroller to the daycare that's right across the street has to go into the road. Um, there are kids, a lot of them on the street, who walk or ride their bike to Second Helene Elementary School to get to the school or to the playground, or walk to Benel when they to the Benel High School when they miss their bus. There is a public bus stop on the sloped property I mentioned, so the people that have to wait at that wait in the street because, again, they have no way to wait on the um, lawn when there is snow or mud. Um, the kids that wait at the corner of Streckfus Road or Broadmere, which is one street over, too, um, when there is snow and it's plowed, have to, again, wait in the street in the dark, because for high school, when they get picked up, it is still dark out, and the cars are going around 60 miles an hour, and I know that because we have a speedometer right there. And every day, they are passing the bus, even when it's stopped, and every day, they're blowing through it like it was the highway. Uh, one time I was there, a lady fell crossing, and I had to block the entire road for her to be able to get up, and it was an elderly lady, otherwise she was gonna get hit. Um, I was told that the sidewalk from Streckfus Road to Success Ave may have to wait because other sidewalks need to be repaired first, but at least those people have a sidewalk to stand on. For us, it, it is so dangerous to get to the school, to elementary school. It's ridiculous. Um, it should be made a priority. It won't affect the town's budget because the developer would be putting the money in, so the sidewalk should be put in before um, any of the costs of labor and material go up, every year it goes up, and the money from the developer is no longer enough. When the original developer got the approval, the sidewalk was supposed to be put in by the end of construction, which is almost complete. When he owned that corner lot, that developer should have been made to put that sidewalk in. We shouldn't have to be punished because that didn't happen and the property got sold. Um, it doesn't matter to us if it's the developer or the town that puts in the sidewalk, but we need a sidewalk and we need it like yesterday. Um, we had several people already got hit that live on Broadbridge Ave crossing that part of the road because it, again, it's a four lane highway. Um, so I don't think it needs to be, we're gonna wait a year or two or three. It is very dangerous people that live there, every time we want to get across, you're putting your life in your hands because you can't even get to the crosswalk to be able to cross safely. There are no speed bumps put in. They say that they won't, they, they're not allowed to do that. So you guys are, are the last hope. Um, and frankly, it's unfair. That part of Broadbridge is completely forgotten about all the time. We have new curbs going in on sidewalks that look beautiful that really didn't need to be repaired. And Broadbridge, again, has a little bit of sidewalk here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Nothing continuous. And people from Streckfus Road to Broadmere and a little higher cannot get to it. Um, on my second part, I am here on behalf of my neighbor, Wes and Teresa Chmielewski, who live at 75 Streckfus Road, which is right um, in front of the develop development on the Streckfus Road side. Um, they couldn't be here due to health reasons, um, so they asked me to come and speak for them. Uh, according to the approved uh, landscape plan that the developer um, has to plant trees on the side of their house and behind their house, 
The trees that were approved by the Planning Commission can grow up to 25 to 40 feet tall. Um, they ask that they plant a dwarf version of those trees that only grow 10 to 15 feet tall instead um, because it would be too much maintenance for them and if a tree fell over during a storm, it's unsafe. Um, they would also prefer if the developer could put in a fence instead, which may be easier for the developer to install the fence instead of planting the trees, I'm not sure, and less maintenance for them. Um, so I don't know if you guys can address the size of the trees or the fence um, that were approved on the, when the development got approved. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? in favor or opposition or neither? Seeing none. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn this over to Sismitha Tata, the town planner, to answer a couple of those questions. Thank you. Um, so there's a lot um, that was mentioned um, a few minutes ago about lack of sidewalks on Broadbridge and Stratford and the need for sidewalks, which I totally agree um, is a dire need there. But uh, most recently, I think um, one year ago or two years ago, there was a new state statute that came about uh, for zoning commissions only, not for planning commissions, which said um, the commission cannot unreasonably burden a developer for offsite improvements uh, because housing is a pressing need in the state and we need more housing. So there was most, most of the um, you know, most communities had this resistance to developments and they wanted developers to build sidewalks uh, and new infrastructure um, for things that, you know, did not even, um, you know, it's not even the developer's fault that he's going in there and, you know, he's building new homes. Now he's burdened with having to, you know, bear that extra expense just to please the community. So that state statute was uh, implemented for zoning commissions, not for uh, planning. Planning still can ask for implementation of sidewalks. But then when I read the subdivision regulations, I had this question for the town engineer and I asked, this talks about subdivisions with sidewalks, which in my mind, I would think about these large scale subdivisions where you have five or 15 homes and you have sidewalks connecting them. But in this case, there's just one home that is fronting Broadbridge Avenue, and most of the homes are like, you know, stacked up one behind the other. They're not even like a unit, like a subdivision, uh, an actual subdivision by definition. So why are we asking the developer to build a sidewalk for a piece of property that he is not even responsible for maintenance? Then the town engineer said this is how it was typically done in the town hall in the past and we often, the money for sidewalks comes from the developers to the general fund if they don't build it or we have them build it and maintain it. Now that is something that I cannot argue on but I can tell that you know the amount that he is contributing to the sidewalk fund does include contingency like you know for all the amounts that are you know, in the future, the inflation cost, the milling, the paving, the removing of trees, replacing of trees and everything else. So I don't believe we should ask a single penny more. We shouldn't be anti-development. We have to be pro-development town and you know, encourage more housing opportunities. At the same time, balance the need of sidewalks and infrastructure that is routinely needed in these communities. But this is not the place for it. If a, a community member feels that their portion of the town has been neglected and um, the sidewalk hasn't been built in their portion. They have to go to the CDBG hearings, advocate for um, you know, implementation of sidewalks or prioritizing sidewalks in their neighborhood. It should start from there and not from the planning commission. The second piece is about um, the fence and the trees. And yes, there is an approved site plan that shows four street trees behind 75 Stratford Road, which I believe should be implemented and um, that will be caught by our zoning enforcement officer before signing off on the final permit and Kelly Kerrigan, the conservation superintendent has to sign off on it. So absolutely that has to be, go in per the plan. Uh, the, regarding the fence request, that's not part of the plan and he's not the original developer. The original developer, it seems, had negotiated a deal with the neighbors that um, he would build the fence just to help protect the neighbors, but now he's out of picture. And I don't believe there is any condition of approval that we have 
asking the developer to put this fence in lieu of what promises he made. I would say, I mean, for, for the record, in the future, if any developer is buying a piece of property from another um, contract developer who has applied for a subdivision and, you know, he got the approval, to find out what the agreements were and, you know, because you're put in a tough spot here where you're actually facing the brunt of the neighborhood, whereas the promises were not made by this developer. And, you know, the, that ship has, you know, that uh, ship has passed and now we can't do anything with that. Unfortunate as it is, we cannot do anything with that because even though I can see that Ms. Katerina has um, testified on November 15th requesting for that, none of the commissioners caught it and made it a condition of approval. She asked for um, floodplain management um, and um, stormwater management. She asked for, um, you know, fence and sidewalks and the only things that were caught in the uh, condition of approval were the sidewalks and the payment in lieu for, of open space, that's all. So everything else, even though in good faith we all want it, the, this commission has no legal authority to open up an already approved subdivision and make the developer pay for a fence that, that, that is not shown on a site plan. You can speak again, come on up. Um, the neighbor wasn't requiring to put in fence. Um, there are uh, four trees on the map on one side of the back of the house, two on part of, in the back as well, and I believe seven on the side. He was just saying cost effective, it might be better for the developer to put in a fence versus the trees. The trees are fine, but he would like them to be the ones that grow 10 to 15 feet instead of the 40 foot tall ones. So he was kind of leaving it up to the developer. He would prefer the fence, but if the developer wants to leave the trees, that's fine. When I testified on November 15th, I was um, testifying for the entire neighborhood. We had petitions. At that time, we had over 400 people sign a petition for the sidewalks, um, if you want to refer back to that. So we were advocating for the neighborhood that live in that neighborhood. Um, I believe every single neighbor in that neighborhood on our street, on a street over and a street over, wrote in emails or signed a petition requesting that the town put in sidewalks. Again, we're not requiring that the developer does it. We just want to make sure it's not put off for another three, four years, or we're told later on that there's not enough money um, and, and we're left behind. You wouldn't want that for your neighborhood. You would not want that for your children. You would want them to be able to walk to their playground, to their school safely, to ride their bikes ac across the road safely. Everyone would want that, to walk your dog safely. Um, so the fact that it might be a little more difficult for the town to do it, so what, honestly? We pay our taxes, <laughs> please, please put in the sidewalks. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not making the developer do it. If they want to put the money into it and the town cover the rest, fine. We're just asking that it be done soon, hopefully by summer when the kids are going to the playground and riding their bicycles. Um, and like I said, over 400 people signed a petition for this. So thank you. Thank you. And as Smith has said, that um, we, we appreciate you coming to this, but in that portion really should go to the Public Works Committee. So for your information. Okay, um, is there anyone else that would like to say anything from the public? Okay, great. Um, Madam Chair, what are the implications for the, for the developer if th this request to, uh, for a payment is uh, denied? He has to go through another round of public hearings for the tree replacement in front and that's another, um, you know, st uh, public hearings are for typically follow 65, 35, 65 day rule. So 65 days to open the hearing, 35 days um, to actually um, render a final decision and 65 days um, of extra time for continuation or deferral. So this just um, probably would delay the development. Mm -hmm. May I now have a motion oh. to close the public oh, hearing? Sorry. 
Sorry. Thank you. I do have um, one more question to follow up, and it was alluded to before. Um, regarding the amount of the bond, um, you said that inflation was factored into that. Is that, um, has that been reevaluated given where we're at right now economically? Um, or when was that inflation calculated? Like, is, is that still valid for today? It was done in November 2022. There's not much that has changed between November 2022 and um, right now, 2024. So it still holds good, I think. Mm -hmm. So if there's any more questions amongst us, there isn't another section for that. So may, may I now have a motion to close the public hearing portion of the meeting? So moved. A second. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes um, unanimously. Um, a motion has been made and seconded um, the public hearing port petition of the Romano Brothers Builders LLC seeking modification of the site plan approval for a waiver of condition number two on sidewalks. May I have a motion to open the discussion of the public hearing item amongst the commissioners? So moved. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Aye. So, any questions amongst you guys? I, I guess my question, since I'm new, new to the team here and to the process, uh, so certainly this was already, everything that really was discussed today has already been discussed by the previous commission. They made their decision. Really what we're dealing with now is just, is just uh, the second uh, condition. Uh, and I know since these amendments, these conditions have been placed on the commission approving with, with conditions that perhaps maybe, uh, you know, to satisfy the concerns of the future side, you know, to make sure that, that future sidewalks are indeed considered by the town but yet not hold up the builder that we include some type of uh, word, wordage in there, you know, basically uh, to put some onus on a town to, uh, to do something in the near future with the town. I think that's what the public is asking for. Uh, and I'm not sure it's even our place from what you're saying to do, to make a decision on that, but per, maybe we can make a recommendation or amendment or something like that. So um, you could just word it in a way that you strongly encourage, uh, you know, expedish uh, implementation of the sidewalks in this area. But just so you know, I don't know how Public Works does their job. It's very hard yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> we have another resident asking for sidewalks in Elm Street with the same significance and same priority. And I think it's the Public Works Committee that gets to decide it. Um, so, I mean, whatever the residents want, the 400 signatures and the petitions and everything, if they can take it to the Public Works Committee, they, they would have much better chance of actually having something prioritized, I think. Can, can I ask the public if they've, if they've taken that step? I, I mean... So we have not, Peter, we were not told that we had to uh, at the November 15th meeting. Um, it got approved to put the sidewalks in, so we were not told that we needed to take any other step. Um, and, you know, and I know it is a burden, but we did allow, yeah. the lot was supposed to only be big and enough, I think, for two there, homes. Yeah. And with the condition that sidewalks were going to be put in, the neighborhood got together and allowed a variance for four new homes to be built. Um, and I, I just wish the town would make it a priority. And as regards to other places being the same, they're not. Streckfus Road is the, I mean, Broadbridge Ave is the only four lane road in Stratford that does not have sidewalks on each side or on one side. We have no sidewalks. Every other one probably doesn't have four, um, four lanes to begin with. And if they do have two or three lanes, they have sidewalks running all along um, 
both sides of the street with several Excuse crosswalks. Excuse me, ma'am. The public hearing portion has closed. So I'm sorry, but I can't okay. let you speak more. No, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Joe has a question. Uh, uh, yes, any other questions? So, Smitha, back to my earlier question. You described the length of the hearings. Is that hearings just regarding the sidewalk portion or for the whole project? Does the whole project have to go under re renewed approval? Uh, for uh, the 65, 35, 65? Any public hearing, no matter how small, it, it, it follows that 65, 35, 65 statute or timeline. Does the need to adjudicate this sidewalk issue affect the development of the entire project or is it a separate issue that would be heard? That, um, I think it'll, it'll affect the entry to that project there because it's right um, you know, near the entrance of those lots. Um, I, I don't think the, there is any, anything preventing the developer from building the actual homes in the back but it's just the entrance and, you know, how the sidewalk piece will be dealt there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now we move on to the motion for um, yeah. I, Just a technical thing. I didn't mean to cut off the resident, but in, according to the books, I know Attorney Kubik also would agree that when a public hearing has closed, we cannot, you know, bring back the public to yeah. ask because if you have 200 residents, then you can open it to a lot of people to come back and retestify. So that's why I had to cut short. That's why I ask. I'm, I'm new to the process, so that's why I always ask. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Can I get a motion for um, decision about the? I, I still have some, uh, another more. question. Okay. Yeah, just more kind questions. of um, explain my thinking about this. Um, you know, to me, it seems like the sidewalk issue is a much larger ongoing issue and not necessarily should hinder the developer. Um, it should still be addressed and taken care of, but I think that our obligation is to look at the engineer's comments, the, con the superintendent's comments for conservation, um, hear the public, and also look whether it's consistent with the POCD. And based on what's in the staff report, um, th um, that waiver uh, provided that the, the funds are provided to the town would be consistent. Um, and that is our obligation. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you, Max. Madam Chair, one last thing. Yes. If you cho choose to vote um, a denial or an approval, whatever it is, you have to state the reason uh, for doing that per the subdivision regulations. So if you're approving it, it's because of the topography and the site characteristics and you know, the lack of connectivity right now and, you know, what the change of developers, whatever is the reason. But if you're denying it, you also must state the reason for the record, similarly. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. I think he was just giving his opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to highlight John Casey's initial statement that it makes sense to ins begin to install sidewalks on Broadbridge in light of the public testimony that's a clear and present danger to the residents there not having sidewalks. I do not believe that requiring the sidewalks of developers is an undue burden. So uh, uh, that's my thinking. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, may I get a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, petition of Romano Brothers Builders LLC seeking a modification of the site plan approval uh, to remove condition number two on sidewalks uh, requirement. I think it's an undue burden on the, uh, uh, on the developer. I second. Um, if you look at my staff report for waivers, the only three uh, conditions under which waivers may be considered are number one, topographic or geological features making compliance with design standards as set forth in the subdivision regulations impractical, 
size and shape of property making compliance with design standards set forth in the subdivision regulations impractical or inability of public utilities to provide the service. So I think this one qualifies for number one in the way the topography is in front of the lot. So that should be the, do you restate the motion with the motion? Yeah. I will do my best to restate that motion. Yeah. But, um, I'd like to uh, make a motion uh, to approve the petition of the Romano Brothers Builders LLC seeking a modification of the site plan to remove condition number two of sidewalks uh, based on uh, the uh, condition number one and the subdivision we're going to And just to clarify, will that also require the bond to be made available to the town? Okay. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Yes, all opposed. Any abstains? So again, we do not say aye. Oh, sorry. I agree. So that's, <coughs> so that um, passes an, as an approval of four to one. May I get a motion to close the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. No. <laughs>